What is up, Dom Army? It's your boy Royce. As you could probably guess from the title, we're gonna be talking about this really bad habit of mine. That's my, uh, you know, Japanese claw machine addiction. Just kidding. Um, this is about me being just a terrible procrastinator. It's just a habit that I had basically all throughout undergrad. I look back at it, I'm like, this is like just one of the most irresponsible things that I ever could have possibly done. Especially as like, you know, someone who's, you know, pre-med, uh, pre-MD PhD. I did this for really important classes like organic chemistry, upper level biology courses, chemistry, physics courses. Had I messed up on like a single exam, let's say I got like, you know, like a D on an exam for something as competitive as medical school, as MD PhD admissions, that could have just thrown, you know, all my opportunities out of the window. I um, actually blocked this out of my memory. I, I totally forgot that I had this terrible habit and it wasn't until I was uh, hanging out with college friends recently. One of my college friends was talking about a person that they would see like, you know, the day of exams, they would see just grinding away, watching lectures for the first time, the day of exams, and then studying up until the minute before, you know, the afternoon exam, like 5 p.m. or whatever. And I remember hearing this and I was like, wow, this guy sounds like such an idiot. Like, why would you, why would you do that? Like, that is completely animalistic. Um, and then I realized he was talking about me. What an eye opener, I totally forgot that I had these uh, terrible habits. Uh, but anyways, yeah, let's get into it. I uh, studied physics and chemistry as an undergrad. And uh, of course, I was pre-med, uh, pre-MD, PhD. I had to take a lot of the core classes, like, you know, gen chem, you know, biology, organic chemistry. It started with basically my sophomore year. So my freshman year, I was actually a very good student back then. Really on top of things, watch lectures as they came. I would study for exams, starting like four or five days before an exam. But starting my sophomore year uh, with organic chemistry in particular, this is, this is when it all went down. You know, I didn't really have this bad habit before then. If there's one thing I could blame this on, um, it would be organic chemistry. For the first exam, you know, it's one of those things where you're not really sure like how stressful it's gonna be, how much you gotta study. So um, I kind of just studied a lot, um, you know, did my basic formula of starting like, you know, four days before the exam or whatever. And uh, I would just, you know, go through all the lectures, go through all the problem sets, and then uh, try my best in the exam. And um, what happened was, um, uh, organic chemistry at WashU was very hard. I went to WashU for undergrad. Um, organic chemistry is one of those like classic weed out classes. They want the attrition rate to be very high for pre-meds. Um, which is an unfortunate truth, but that's just how, you know, these pre-med courses go. Because it was such a weed-out class, um, the grading was just based on exams. They didn't have homeworks, they didn't have quizzes, any like fluff that you could, you know, pad your grades with. It was purely based on the exam grades, these four exams that you took throughout the semester. And, um, you know, actually at WashU, the exam average was like, some. it was very atrocious. Sometimes it would be like, 30%, like 25% out of 100%, by the way. So basically what went down was on the first exam, um, I scored a 60 and the average was like a 40, which is like kind of insane, right? Because a 60 is like, wow, you bombed that exam. But um, if the average is a 40, that was like an A or an A plus, basically. If your final grade was based on the average of your four exams, uh, scoring a 60 when the average is 40 gave you a ton of cushion. That was unfortunately the start of it all. I started, um, you know, procrastinating a little more and a little more with each uh, exam. You know, this, this line would keep creeping up where, um, you know, instead of four days, it was three days. Instead of three days, it would be two days before the exam, and then one day. And what happened was I would also miss lectures. You know, sometimes you just wanna sleep in. It was like a 9 a.m. class or something. You know, for one exam, it'd be one lecture. For the next exam, it'd be like two or three lectures that I'd miss. They were recorded so I could watch them, but you know, I wouldn't watch them the day of. I was kind of lazy, um, and I wanted to like relax and actually enjoy my life instead of, you know, study organic chemistry. Instead of, you know, watching the lecture the day of, then I missed it, I would wait, you know, a few days, wait a few weeks, and so basically, what happened was this, you know, just became a slippery slope where I just became, um, you know, honestly just super complacent. I just let, you know, things just, you know, get completely out of hand uh, to the point where I actually wouldn't attend any of the lectures at all in person and I wouldn't watch the lecture recordings at all until just a few days before, okay? So basically come, you know, the fourth day before an exam, I would then start even like thinking about organic chemistry. So I would, I would put that class completely on the back burners. So that started a few days before. Um, and then again, it just kept creeping up. This, this was, oh my gosh, this is, so right now I'm showing you the inner workings of my mind and just how, you know, a master procrastinator works. Uh, but basically, you know, after, you know, many exams, many weeks of this, um, I got to the point, the final, you know, form of my procrastination, you know, having an exam at like 6 p.m. that day, I wouldn't start watching the lectures for the first time until like 5 a.m. in the morning. So I would allot myself basically like 13 hours. <laughs> I would go to sleep the night before. Um, somehow I was able to, you know, sleep. I would set an alarm for, you know, like 5 a.m. Um, I would get a full night's rest, like seven, eight hours. And um, then I'd wake up at 5 a.m. and just go hard. And I would watch lectures for the first time 
starting at 5 a.m. I remember uh, counting to myself the night before, I would count how many lectures I had to watch. So I'd scroll through, you know, the Canvas page or whatever you guys use, Blackboard. I would scroll through and see, okay, um, you know, September 3rd, I missed a lecture. September 5th, I missed a lecture. September 7th. And I'd just count all the lectures I had for that unit, for that exam. I would just go to sleep the night before knowing I had, let's say, 13 lectures to watch when I woke up at 5 a.m. And, um, that was absolutely insane. You know, there's, there's there's no reason I should have done that. There's no reason anyone should ever do that. Um, I, again, I look back at this now, I, I had this blocked out of my memory because it was just such a like stressful time period. I don't know why I subjected myself to so much stress um, in a day. And so now I'm gonna talk about um, exactly what happened on the exam days, how I approached this. So like I said before, I'd wake up at 5 a.m. the day of the exam. My exam was at uh, 6 p.m. So basically I allotted um, you know, 13 hours for myself. The first thing I would do is I would do a first pass of all the material. I would watch all the lectures and take really good notes. I'd watch lectures on like 1.5 times or two times speed. And so obviously there's there's no other way to approach this because you know I've never seen the material before. I, I had to watch the lectures. You know what I mean? I have to see what the material is. Just really make sure I got everything the uh, teacher was trying to say. So like whatever they said, that I thought was important, I would write it down. So I'd make sure I took really in-depth notes. Basically, I was writing the entire time, and that was my strategy. And when I first, you know, watched the lectures, my goal was not to retain by any means. My goal was just to understand. So, you know, I would watch the lecture, move on to the next lecture, and uh, oftentimes I wouldn't even remember anything from the previous lecture. And if I didn't understand what the teacher was saying, I would just rewind and rewatch it until I understood. So I just keep repeating and just, just chug along and get through everything, understand what the teacher was saying, and make sure that I wrote down notes. If I, you know, forgot the notes and then looked at the notes again, I could know exactly what the teacher was trying to say. So they're pretty in-depth notes. You know, when it came to organic chemistry or physics or whatever, I would draw really in-depth diagrams and uh, make sure, like basically everything that they were showing in the PowerPoint slides, I would have in my notes. Each lecture would roughly take one page of loose leaf, like front and back. So basically by the end of it, I had uh, just 13 pages of loose leaf. You know, having those 13 pages in my hand um, was a big thing for me because basically, um, in my mind, it just it just made it easier to consume. In my mind, I just thought, okay, everything I need to know for the exam is on these 13 pages, uh, front and back, so I guess 26 pages, but you know, 13 pages, let's just say. As long as I just memorize everything here, um, I should be good for the exam. And that was my mindset for all of the exams. So again, I would go through all the lectures, get these really good notes, and then once that was done, let's say I watched, you know, 1.5 times speed or two times speed, um, I obviously have to take breaks and get some lunch. Um, that would probably take me like, you know, if it's 13 hours of lectures, uh, that would probably take me like, I don't know, eight hours, 10 hours, something like that. Cause you know, a lot of times I'd have to rewind and like re-listen to what the professor was saying and try to, you know, really understand. After all the lectures that basically left me like three or five hours or two hours. I don't even remember. These, these days were honestly a blur, so I kind of forgot. But I think roughly like, you know, four or five hours to um, look over the notes and really memorize it. And, um, you know, if, if you break things down like this, uh, it becomes a lot more approachable because, you know, again, I only have 13 pages of notes. And then how long does it take for me to memorize, you know, one page front and back? Um, maybe like, you know, 10, 20 minutes or something. Well, maybe less, five, five, 10 minutes. Basically, I'll just go through all the notes and again, very linearly, um, just make sure I memorized everything. Um, and I wouldn't move on until I understood and memorized what was on the page in front of me. So let's say I have you know, a page of organic chemistry lecture notes in front of me, and it's got you know, all these chemical reactions. You know, each lecture really just boils down to you know, that, that one page front and back, and it really just boils down to like what, five or six reactions. For each reaction, uh, there are basically just two things I need to memorize. So the first thing I need to memorize for a reaction was uh, the mechanism, okay? And in organic chemistry terms, this was called the electron pushing or arrow pushing mechanism. You would um, have two molecules, let's say, A and B, and there'd be an oxygen here, nitrogen here, let's say. You would draw exactly where the oxygen electrons went. For example, maybe there's like a water that comes in, and so, you know, electrons go here, hydrogen moves here, blah, blah, blah. The second thing you needed to know was a higher level view of the reaction. Basically, you would have, let's say, molecule A, and molecule B, what does molecule C look like? The end result. And so that doesn't require, you know, knowing exactly where the arrows go. So for each reaction, those are the only two things that you had to memorize. And actually what I would do was I would grab a uh, spare notebook. So I'd always keep a spare notebook with a bunch of, you know, empty pages. Um, just like one of those cheap, like 80 cent, you know, spiral notebooks um, that they sell at Walmart. So basically in my notebook, I would draw exactly what I saw in my lecture notes and I would make sure that I understood everything clearly. And then what I would do is I would cover up that drawing 
and then try to draw it again from memory. And let's say, you know, I made a mistake and I moved the electrons to the wrong atom or whatever. Uh, basically, I would look at the answer and then, um, you know, correct it and try again and try to draw from memory um, exactly what the answer is. And every time I'd mess up, I'd look at the answer again, scratch it out and just restart. And so basically, I just, I just forced this information into my mind through a lot of these repetitions of active recall. So I just forced myself to be able to recall it from scratch, blank sheet of paper. You know, every time I messed up, I would look again. And then once I finally got it down the first time through, I would make sure I could um, replicate that like two or three more times. So finally, I had this like in my fingertips, essentially, in my muscle memory. And um, once I did that one reaction, then I go back to my lecture notes and then move on to the next reaction. Repeat the same process. You know, first copy down, understand fully, and then I would try to draw from scratch until I got it correctly, like, you know, three or four times in a row. And then after I did that, actually, I would go back to the previous and try to conjure that up from my memory. Every so often, I would just go back and, um, you know, refer to my previous repetitions. And so essentially what I'm doing here is I'm doing a bunch of reps of like flashcards. And so I'm just making sure I can just draw all the things over and over again. And by the time I got through all of my lecture notes, uh, front and back, I would be able to draw the entire lecture from my memory. You know, that's, that's a very powerful thing because basically I just had the entire lecture memorized. So basically by the end of it, I just had this entire lecture, you know, injected into my brain. I could conjure it up at will. This reminds me of that, you know, scene in uh, The Matrix. Trinity has to learn how to fly a helicopter and, uh, you know, they just upload how to fly a helicopter in her brain and then she's, she's got in a few seconds. Like that's basically what I'm doing is I'm just uploading this information into my brain in a very brute force method of just a ton of repetitions. And once I finished that one lecture, front and back, I would move on to the next lecture. You know, repeat the same process, make sure I can get it down front and back, do a ton of repetitions. By the end of it, each reaction, I would have drawn like, I don't know, 15, 20 times. I actually don't remember again, because uh, each of these days was a blur. You know, after the exam, I'd go sleep for a while. And I'd just go down the list and just brute force each of the lectures. And um, by the end of this, like, you know, two, three, four hour, uh, time period, I basically have the entire lecture notes crammed into my brain and I could just conjure up any of the reactions, any of the, you know, things the professor said at will. And then after that, I would uh, quiz myself. I would just be like, oh, draw reaction number 12. And I would just draw that. So I would just draw on the blank piece of paper, you know, reaction 12. I would have the arrow pushing mechanism and I'd also have the higher level, you know, A plus B equals C, what that looks like for that reaction. And I could just, you know, do that for all the reactions. And so that prepared me pretty well for the exam. Um, this is for organic chemistry terms, and I apologize if you've never taken organic chemistry. Um, or rather, I don't apologize. I'm actually very happy for you. When it came to other exams, let's say like physics or um, biology, um, you know, there are other things you need to memorize. So part of it was knowing exactly what the exam was looking for, um, but you know, it's still memorization end of the day. And um, you know, this method worked pretty well for everything. So again, here, this wasn't me having like exceptional memory or anything. I would forget a lot of stuff. You know, when I, when I watched the lectures for the first time through, I basically forgot all of it. It wasn't until I sat down and I spent the time to do all those repetitions, drawing it over and over again and making a lot of mistakes, but drawing over and over again until I was flawless and I can do it multiple times in a row and I could, you know, quiz myself and, and try to draw other stuff. It wasn't until then that I really, you know, had all the concepts down. So once I finished memorizing all the lectures, if there was time remaining, I would look at other supplementary information. So for example, the professors would provide like, you know, problem sets with answers. Hopefully there were answers, oh my gosh. And so basically I would just, you know, look at the problems, see if I could solve them. If not, I would look at the answers, write down the answers a few times until that was in my memory. So I just treated those as like basically extra lecture materials where I could still do the same strategies of memorizing. So I'd look through, you know, those problem sets they provide, they might provide like some problems in the textbook too. That was all I did. Um, I mean, not all I did, that basically took up all the 13 hours. So it was all just about repetitions and having a blank canvas in front of you where, you know, there weren't hints given to you. It was just purely based on your recollection. That's really where um, you know, I was able to internalize all this information. This happened with organic chemistry, but um, I'm a very consistent person, what can I say? I, I carried it over to um, other uh, classes as well. I studied physics and chemistry as an undergrad. It just worked out really well because um, I would always take a ton of classes. I would take like six or seven classes every semester, you know, a bunch of classes, just trying to, you know, achieve my goal of, you know, uh, absorbing a ton of material um, that would prepare me for grad school. I'm just not great at um, like planning ahead and being like, okay, Monday through Friday, I have my schedule planned. You know, Monday morning, I study this one class. You know, Monday afternoon, I study another class, Tuesday. I, I think that's just too much effort for me. And, um, you know, I had lab research too. I could focus a lot of time on research, 
which is a big passion of mine. And after all, you know, I'm studying to be an MD, PhD, and I'm studying to be a physician scientist and run my own, you know, research lab. And with the strategy, I was able to just devote long chunks of time, you know, um, like basically full days to research, and then only have to worry about a class whenever the exam came up, you know, once every few weeks. This worked out really well for me because my research of electronics and and optics and photonic devices really benefits from having long stretches of time. I, I'd much rather have, you know, long stretches of time to work, work on my research rather than just like two hours a day. You know, I can instead devote, you know, uh, many days at a time. Take the exam and after the exam was done, I would forget the class and then wait until the next exam date came up on my calendar. And so that was how I was able to tackle, you know, six or seven classes at the same time. I kind of just did that all throughout sophomore year, junior year and senior year too. Uh, so this um, this strategy carried me throughout undergrad. It's kind of crazy. I will say though, um, had I been, you know, not a crammer and um, I actually studied, you know, in a spaced out time period for all my classes, my, you know, long-term retention of the material definitely would have been better. I am overall happy with the results. Um, I was able to take a bunch of classes and, um, you know, just like get exposed to a ton of material um, and prepare myself for graduate school and medical school. I think this is the right move. Um, for me personally, again, I don't think anyone should follow the, the advice in this video, but um, it's, I think, just kind of an interesting story to share, just how I found success in undergrad. I think it's very unique. I don't think people do this ridiculous strategy. Uh, so I will say that, you know, once medical school rolled around, um, I basically stopped this habit. The first two years of medical school are mostly just lectures, things like that. And, um, you know, I, I was more on top of things. I would watch the lectures as they came. I'd make sure to watch the uh, lecture recordings, the day that they happened. So I wouldn't, you know, watch the material for the first time um, right before the exam. And then I would also study the notes um, as they came. So the day of, I would study my lecture notes. And, um, you know, the main reason for this is that, you know, the material that I, I learned in medical school um, is, is very relevant to my patients. And uh, I just feel like that it's a disservice for me to sacrifice my long-term retention um, by doing this crazy procrastination method you know, for the sake of my patients, I think, you know, it's really important for me to retain this material. And so that's why I was like, okay, I need to, you know, turn a new leaf, stop being, you know, this, this, this absolute fiend when it comes to study and, you know, actually just take my time and absorb the material gradually over time. And uh, I will say my long-term retention um, at least feels a lot better. Overall, I think this was, um, you know, a pretty wild part of my life that um, luckily I've moved on from, um, you know, for the sake of everyone, for the sake of myself, I feel a lot less stress. Uh, for the sake of my patients because you know retain the material better and uh, you know understand medicine better and science better that you know i still look back to because um you know it was a big part of my life and uh this was you know what i had to do to you know get by and um you know do well with however many courses i took and with um, however much research that i productively wanted to achieve i hope you guys found this video uh, insightful um you know entertaining at least and uh, i'll see you in the next one